Okay, so continuing, I've been adjusting the color of the different body elements and the tail and the feet. And now I'm going to get into some of the, the details of the head. Now there's little things in the body, like the coloring of this arm and of that little crink in the elbow, which seems to be tied to what's underneath, that I could try to adjust now-ish. You know, through different means. But it's kind of dangerous until I'm fully sure of, of what's going on, right? So, best to just work on the levels and the color balance, right? for everything and then go back through. So now the head, which has several components, I have a sense of what the coloring is on the body. So now I can work with the head to kind of blend that in. So I'm gonna zoom in a little bit and then we're gonna do direct adjustments to the pieces of the head going from the back. So start with levels. Try brightening the midtones a little bit, dimming the highlights. Because this was from a baby seal, like in the snow, you get a lot of that, that bright highlight dandruff. Yes, I don't want to brighten it too much more than it already is. Okay, now, see there's almost no color to this, so I'm going to go to color balance and shift it. The mid-tones a little bit towards the warm, not too much towards the red. The highlights the same. Just a little bit. And then the shadows the opposite towards the cyan and towards the blue. You'll notice I leave the magenta green slider alone for the most part, unless it's really needed because it tends to, to shift it pretty wildly. So unless the, the source material is really distorted in one way or the other towards magenta or green, I leave that slider alone for the most part. Okay. Now I go to hue saturation and this, I'm actually going to increase the saturation a little bit, get a little bit more color in that fur. Not that much, right? Just a little. Then I'm going to shift it a little bit each way. See what seems to make more sense. I don't want to get it towards green, but I want it a little bit more vibrant than it is. Maybe a touch lighter overall. Okay, now that I have more, more color in there, you can see how I'm going to start to be able to blend that a little bit more believably. And I can even go back to color balance and shift it a bit towards red. Get it a little bit more into those oranges. Now that I've saturated it a bit, there's a bit more color to play with. Same thing with the shadows. And I'm basically giving it more rounded color without making it all monochrome. And I can do little things with the sponge tool and actually saturate just certain edges. But that color is matching pretty well. All right. So big changes throughout there. Now the next part of the head is just this little green from this underneath layer. And this one. So that little green 
I'm just going to play with a little bit. But not right now. That might be something I play with later. I'm just going to leave it there as a note. So now next is the bill and then the eyes. Right. And the bill isn't bad for how this creature is all put together. It's just maybe a little bit one note in terms of color. So let's see if we can round that out a little. Start with levels. Do I want to brighten it? Yeah, just a tiny bit. Limit the highlights. It's pretty shiny. Limit the shadows because it's pretty dark at the tips. Okay, and I still probably need to cut it out a little bit better. Now I go to image adjustments. And you know, the same thing over and over, color balance. Start with the midtones. See what makes sense. I think I want it to be a slightly different kind of color. So I'm going to push this more towards the cools. Even though that doesn't blend in so well with the fur, I think it's going to, I want it to stand out more as a bill. And the highlights, I'll go back to the warms. And then in the shadows, I'll push the cools again. Yeah, now it's starting to have a little bit more dimension across it. See that difference? Where I keep the warms at the edges and in the highlights, but I add cools to more of the shadows so that it will stand out a little bit more as being a different texture and material than the, than the fur. Now I go to the big colored guns, hue saturation, see if I want to shift it one way or the other, more towards the purples, more prefers the greens, definitely want to go a little bit more towards the purples. I can try saturating it, bringing those blues out, which I kind of like. And then I think I'm pretty good with the overall lightness. If anything, it can maybe be burned down a little bit. Okay. Now the eyes. Big changes to color here are necessary. So, but we still approach it the same way. image adjustment levels. Here we have some pretty dark shadows, very reflective. So I'm only going to play with the midtones, brighten them, and maybe limit the highlights a little bit. because Those highlights are so bright. And with the shadows a tiny bit. Now color balance will be interesting because we've got a lot of green here. So I'm going to shift it more towards magenta, more towards red, more towards yellow. And with the highlights, more towards red, more towards magenta, more towards blue. See how that brings it a little bit more into the range of what we want. And then in the shadows, we're going to bring in those cyans. So really deadening that kind of fluorescent green aspect. A little of the blue back in the shadows, but not letting it get too dark. And a little bit more towards magenta. So big shift in color balance there. It gives more dimension overall. But it also makes it so the shadows feel a lot darker, because I added so much blue to them. They had so much yellow before. So I might go in and limit the highlights with levels, but brighten the midtones. And then dodge can help with that, lightening some of those shadows too. Okay, next, hue saturation. And try saturating it little bit more. 
so I can see what the color shifts are doing. And then shift it a little bit towards the warms. It gets me started. Okay. So then I look at the whole thing and think, okay, I can always approach them again. I might actually even try distorting them a little bit, kind of lining them up a little bit more with what the seal has underneath. We have to kind of create our own anatomy here. Yes, those line up a little bit with the skeletal structure that's there. And those eyes are pretty striking on their own. And now we can start thinking about blending everything together from the top down. So from these eyes on down, I'm going to go ahead and take the opacity down. Then I'm going to take my lasso and do a rough cut because I know I want more of this bill to show. Since the bill is an entirely different texture, I'm just going to delete it wholly without any feather right now. Bring the eye back. And then I want to cut out around the eye. In a way that works for the silhouette of my creature. Uh, but for that, I think I'm going to feather it by two pixels with my lasso tool. So we'll soften it a little bit. Now because this reference was shot in macro mode up close with a really, really large aperture on the camera. Pull that out a little before I delete. There we go. You can see how that eye is a lot blurrier and softer than this one. But this is pretty sharp and in focus. So how can I cheat this and make this look a little bit more in focus? Well, I can do it with what's called the sharpening tool. So in this drawer, it's underneath the gradient tool. You have blur, sharpen, and smudge. It's very similar in PhotoP. So I'm going to use the sharpen tool. I'm going to use it as a strength below 30. Large and soft brush so it transitions well. And then you just hit it a little bit. And what it does, it's not magic. It can't um, make content appear that wasn't there but it can increase the contrast between edges. So it's doing a little bit at a time. It's basically dodging and burning where it sees edges. So it's a little extreme, but that's definitely sharper than it was before. I used it, right? So it goes from that to this. Now I'm adjusting things individually here. So I want the eyes to be pretty strong. But that's a little too saturated. So I, I go to the tool underneath it. I go to the sponge tool. I put it on desaturate. I use a large, soft brush at a, a strength of less than 30. And I'm going to take some of that saturation out. But I'm also going to burn all the same settings. But I'm going to burn the midtones a little bit smaller this time, targeted brush. I'm zoomed in at 300%, which is as much as I want to be zoomed in for something at this resolution. This is 150 pixels per inch for high def screens. And I'm just burning some of the shadows, especially where it's going to overlap with the bill. And then because we have those brights around the eye, I'm going to dodge the midtones around the eye. So that eye is nice and bright on both sides. 